This video introduces the structure of organometallic compounds. Most of the reading on structure is in chapter 40, and in the second video, some of the reading on reactivity was introduced in chapter 9. We'll begin by applying a diagonal rule to determine the order of orbitals as they're filled by electrons. You're probably already familiar with this, so along each diagonal, 1s is followed by 2s in energy, and then 2p and 3s, and then 3p followed by 4s before returning to the third row with 3d, 4p, 5s, and so on. With organotransition metal compounds involving the d orbitals, the hybrid orbitals generally involve not only the s orbital and the p orbitals, but may also involve one or two of the d orbitals in the shell above it. Scrolling down the page, this shows the periodic table of the elements with the transition metal part of the periodic table numbered using the IUPAC convention, groups 3 through 12. The reasons for this are helpful when we discuss specific transition metals and the expectation for the number of valence electrons corresponding to specific oxidation states. For palladium, in the zero oxidation state. Palladium is in group 10. Therefore, there are 10 valence electrons associated with palladium zero. For chromium, in group six, six valence electrons associated with chromium in the zero oxidation state. There can also be positive oxidation states. If palladium loses two electrons to a palladium plus two form, palladium two has eight valence electrons. And rarely, there will be negative oxidation states. Manganese has seven valence electrons in the zero oxidation state. In the minus one oxidation state, manganese has eight valence electrons. This corresponds to the negative oxidation states that we have previously encountered for fluoride, oxide, nitride, and carbide. Turning to page two of the worksheet, at the top of the page, I've depicted the shapes of the d atomic orbitals. However, it will be more informative if I show you these orbitals on Spartan. Spartan doesn't show all of the orbitals, but for nickel, Spartan shows many of the relevant orbitals along the x, y, and z axes. This is the d, x, z orbital. The d, y, z orbital.
the dxy orbital the dx squared minus y squared orbital which is 45 degrees to the xy orbital and then the next orbital in energy is the 4s orbital with the LUMO being the d z squared orbital. This unusual shape actually has the typical set of four lobes, one along the z-axis and the other anywhere along the x and y axes. If we could place at a moment in time it would have a typical four lobe pattern, but in fact, the electrons have an equal probability of being anywhere along this equatorial type of area. Therefore, the unusual donut shape of the d z square orbital. If we go down group 10 to palladium, Spartan happens to show only one field orbital and four empty orbitals. The field orbital is a d x squared minus y squared four lobe orbital. The LUMO is the 5s orbital. And then at higher energy, we have three p orbitals, each oriented orthogonally, or 90 degrees to each other. I show the p orbitals again. And then the s orbital. Returning to the second page of the worksheet, we can move to section C, which describes a very commonly used organopalladium source, tetrachus triphenylphosphine palladium. I've shown one of the triphenylphosphine ligands in its full form. To save space and time, we typically abbreviate the phenyl group with PH. And so you will often see PPH3, which is the triphenylphosphine ligand. Triphenylphosphine is a neutral ligand. It donates a pair of electrons to an empty orbital on palladium, but it does not donate any charge or take any charge from the palladium metal. So it does not change the formal oxidation state of palladium, which remains palladium zero. Palladium zero compounds have 10 electrons. And in most organometallic compounds, all of the electrons associated with the metal will be in D electrons compared to the electron configuration that is often published in periodic tables for gas phase metals. The total valence electron count is the D electron count associated with the metal plus all of the electrons donated by each ligand. Each triphenylphosphine ligand donates two electrons. So with four triphenylphosphine ligands, we have a total of eight electrons from the ligands, and therefore the total valence electron count is 18 electrons. The 18 electron rule is analogous to the octet rule 
for second row elements, such as carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. The crystal structure shows that the four triphenylphosphine ligands are oriented in a perfect tetrahedral orientation. That corresponds to sp3 hybridization. But in this case, it involves the 5s and all three of the 5p orbitals, which hybridize as empty orbitals that accept electrons from the ligands. Turning to the next page of the worksheet, in class, we'll discuss these two complexes of palladium and rhodium. From X-ray crystallography, we know that both complexes have square planar geometry. This is a geometry that you may not have seen yet in the Chemistry 202 or 203 courses. The explanation of this geometry is consistent with four of the d orbitals that are filled, with one of the d orbitals being unfilled and hybridizing with the s and all three of the p orbitals in what we call dsp3 hybrid. To prepare for the discussion, I'll also mention that the chloride ligand donates two electrons to the metal, whether it is palladium or rhodium or another transition metal. But the chloride ligand in its free form is negatively charged. And so it requires a corresponding positive charge on the remainder of the complex. This affects the formal oxidation state. In the class meeting for the dichloro bis triphenylphosphine palladium complex, we'll discuss the formal oxidation state of palladium, how many d electrons come from palladium, and the total valence electron count. Scrolling down the page, we'll do the same for the rhodium complex. This concludes the video on the introduction to organometallic structure.